This video shows the works of Peter Lauritsen. Peter was from Denmark, born there and moved back there and passed away there. But he came to New York through Washington, D.C. in 1883 in his mid-30s. And after a couple of years, he opened his own architectural practice and he designed some very significant buildings in Brooklyn as well as in Manhattan. And at some point in the late 1890s, he partnered with Louis Voss. So you'll see Lauritsen and Voss associated with a lot of the projects that Peter Lauritsen designed. But it wasn't long after he partnered with Louis Voss that he got it in his mind that he wanted to take his wife out west and be part of the Yukon Gold Rush in Canada, right at the end of the 19th century. So his wife and he went out there, they joined uh, one of his children in Seattle and they all went up to the Yukon Territory to search for gold. But then he came back and resumed his architectural practice for a little while and then he finished doing his architectural career. So here's a picture, pictures of three of his buildings, which I'll show you what they look like now. The first is the Offerman building, which is one of the most historic buildings in downtown Brooklyn, right on Fulton Street. And also it fronts uh, the perpendicular street to Fulton, Duffield Street. And it's actually a huge building. It was designed to be a department store. It was actually S. Wexler and Sons for a short while. And then it became Martin's department store for 55 years. And that was a well-known store and people who worked there still remember it fondly as being a great place to work where the workers were treated correctly and everything. So. But it's a beautiful building. We'll show you what that looks like. I'll also show you in Williamsburg, it's now a Hasidic functioning building right on Bedford Avenue in Williamsburg, the Hanover Club. It, it used to be the Hanover Club and originally it was a mansion. So Peter Lauritsen was involved in converting it from a mansion to a club. And another club he designed from the ground up was the Union League Club in Crown Heights, which at one time, you see a picture here in 1906, 15, 16 years after it was built, and it had a large tower on the corner. It no longer has a tower, but the building still looks largely like it did originally. And I'll show you that. One other thing I could mention about Peter Lauritsen is he also designed a very Romanesque, attractive building in Manhattan. It was called the Manhattan Athletic Club in Midtown Manhattan, right on Madison Avenue and 45th Street. It's no longer there, but he did seem to develop a niche of designing clubhouses for various groups. There used to be a lot of groups that had their own clubhouses and athletic clubs back in the day. And so a lot of architects actually can claim that, that they've gotten assignments to design clubhouses. So I'll show you in chronological order the works that still exist in Brooklyn by Peter Lauritsen. I just wanted to add one more slide about that Manhattan Athletic Club that I was talking about. I usually don't include pictures of buildings in Manhattan or do videos of them for members of the Brooklyn School. But in this case, I, I would have filmed this if it still did exist. And it was at 45th and Madison on the southeast corner in Midtown Manhattan. And I actually worked on this block. Never knew that this building once stood right next to the building that I worked in. I worked on Madison between 44th and 45th. So the main face of the building that you see here is facing Madison Avenue and then the cross street is 45th Street. 
anyway, it's too bad that it still didn't exist. It would have been great, but that goes for a lot of buildings, especially in Manhattan. Fortunately, there's a lot more in the way of historic preservation in Brooklyn. This is 563 Bedford Avenue at Rodney Street on the southeast corner in Williamsburg. It was originally the Hawley Mansion, then it became the Hanover Club, and now it's, uh, I have to get my uh, translation out, something uh, Hasidic, I mean, heavily Hasidic part of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And this building here on the northeast corner is just beautiful. I couldn't help but notice it. I can't get the address, but I'll try to find out who designed that. So, Loritzen and Voss designed the Holly Mansion at 563 Bedford, 1875, and then 1891. This is the Union League Club, designed by Peter J. Loritzen, built in 1889 to 90. Let's take a closer look at it. You can see here it says 1889 Unity Club. It was at one time it was the Unity Club, but it was also the Union Club, and now it's a senior center. And we're in Grant Square on Rogers Avenue, where Rogers starts and it shoots off from Bedford Avenue. And that's a statue of Ulysses S. Grant that was paid for by the Union League Club. And you can see over the great Romanesque arches that they have here, there's bust of or base reliefs of Lincoln and of Grant. And a great balcony type entrance. We're in the Grant Square area of Crown Heights, which is an interesting area with a lot of significant buildings that are featuring, including a kitty corner across the street, the former Chatelaine Hotel by Montrose Morris, who, by the way, was also a, a member of the Union League Club. This was one of many clubhouse buildings built for people on the Republican side of the equation and also the Democratic side. Like Frank Freeman designed a, one in the Bushwick neighborhood for the Democratic Club. And uh, they would have dinners here, annual Lincoln dinners in honor of Abraham Lincoln and maybe they had rooms for members in the upper floors when they needed a place to stay. And it's right down the street from a, an armory on Bedford Avenue. And uh, also apartment buildings designed by George Chappelle and Montrose Morris, so. The Union Club. Peter J. Loritzen built in 1889 to 90 here in Grand Square in Crown Heights. This is Peter Loritzen's Offerman building in downtown Brooklyn. We're walking along the Duffield Street side. It's a huge building and it wraps around onto Fulton Street. So I'll show you the main 
facade coming up, but this is still pretty significant. Across the street here in order to get a better look at it. And I guess the original tenant of the building was a department store named S. Wechler, Wechsler and Sons. This says Offerman Building 1890 to 1891. But after S. Wechsler and Sons occupied the space, then it became Martin's department store for 55 years. And then it's been a range of things since then. It's been converted to residential. I think there's like 80 some odd units in the upstairs and there's some retail at the ground floor. And this is an older building here at the corner of Duffield and Fulton that's being renovated. And we're walking under some scaffolding, which there always is in New York. So let's trudge through the slush here in early February. We had a significant snowfall on Monday that paralyzed everything in New York for a day to two days. So here's the main facade, and again we'll get a better look at it from across the street. So instead of Martin's department store, you have Old Navy, TJ Maxx. Modern retail. And this is the Liebman building, built in 1885, designed by the Parfit Brothers, which I'll cover in the Parfit Brothers first video that I'm doing of them. So, back to the Offerman building. It's fantastic, isn't it? A lot of arches including the main arch over the main entrance. So the inscription on the side of the building said 1890 to 91. I have that the construction was from 1890 to 93. So this was when Romanist revival was at its hilt. The Offerman building, Peter J. Loritzen, downtown Brooklyn. Okay, I've showed all these houses that I'm pointing the camera at on Hancock Street in Bed-Stuy, built in the 1880s, designed by Montrose Morris. This is a real Montrose Morris end of the street. And that's the Kelly Mansion at 247. Hancock Street, designed by Montrose Morris where Grover Cleveland liked to hang out. But I'm back on this street, and I can't help but looking at uh, the Montrose Morris row houses again. But I'm back on the street to look at a building that wasn't designed by him, right, but it was right across the street from where he lived. And that's by P.J. Loritzen. at 239 Hancock and let's see which one is that okay 237 239 right here with the large arch doorway and it was built in 1891 beautiful I wonder what uh, Montrose Morris thought about another architect designing something right across the street from him. I guess he knew he couldn't design everything. 
Montrose Morris lived from a couple of reports he lived here where there's now a vacant house his house burned down but his house was a twin to this house here on the corner designed by him at 232 Take a closer look at 232. We're at the corner of Marcy. And we've had a lot of snow since the last time I was filming here. Let's take a closer look at PJ Loritzen's house. Another impressive one here in the corner is just one after the another. Let's look back across the street at Montrose Morris's houses. All the way down to the last arch. So here we are. PJ Loritzen, 1891. Romanesque revival, Queen Anne style at 237, 239 Hancock Street in Bed-Stuy. I don't have the year that this firehouse was built. I'm looking on the building for a year, but it was designed by P.J. Loritzen for the Brooklyn Fire Department before Brooklyn merged with New York City in 1898. So it's probably built in the 1880s, 1890s. And it's here at two oh six Monroe Street, just east of Nostrand Avenue in Bed Stuy, PJ Loritzen. Here we've got Two more by P.J. Loritzen, 670 and 672 St. Mark's Avenue, 1895-96, and they are different from the rest. Right across the street from the St. Mark's where, St. Mark's apartment building where George Chappelle lived. P.J. Loritzen. 1896 is the date I have for this former house, the Molenauer Mansion, at 505 Bedford Avenue and Taylor Street in Williamsburg. And it later became, it's described as neoclassical, and it later became the Congress Club. It was designed by Loritzen and Voss, who also designed the other clubhouse just south of here. That was also a mansion and then became a, a club and then an aesthetic something. And it's holding its own here on the northeast corner of Bedford and Taylor in Williamsburg. Beautiful building. You can see the uh, Williamsburg Bridge Tower in the distance to the north. And looking back south down Bedford, Brooklyn's longest north south street. I was hoping that this was the next house that I was looking for. 1889. 1890, P.J. Loritzen, 889 St. Mark's Avenue, between Brooklyn and Kingston Avenues in Crown Heights. And we just uh, looked at uh, Magnus Stallander's house over here on the other side of this little church. So 
really stands out. It's a little taller and it's really got some great features including that balcony on the second floor. Wow. P.J. Loretson, 1890, 889 St. Mark's Avenue, Crown Heights.